Hello folks and welcome back to Shogun Total War. I am Kana Step and this is going to be part one of my historical campaign for Tokugawa Ieyasu. So I've been playing these battles so far for Oda Nobunaga and then Kublai Khan and they've been really enjoyable so far. I've been really pleasantly uh, impressed and surprised. So going into this one, the Battle of Azuki Zaka, I'm not really familiar with it. I actually just did give a little quick uh, Wikipedia look up, a little research. There, it seems to have been a pretty uh, small engagement. It, it was against the um, the Ikoiki warrior monks that were in Makawa province, which is the the home province of Tokugawa Ieyasu. That's where his uh, clan, the Matsudaira clan, is from. And it seems like a pretty overall kind of a small engagement. But before I kind of get into that, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. What's kind of interesting about the order that they've put these in and I'm just going to go in order here, um, is that Tokugawa Ieyasu is actually the third great unifier. He's not, he's not the second. So historically, it'd be Oda Nobunaga and then Toyotoma Hideyoshi and then Tokugawa Ieyasu. He, you know, he kind of like bid his time and waited for the others to die before he made his move. Now, they all were on the same side um, for, you know, most of their lives, I, I suppose you could say. Uh, so they weren't, they weren't, Enemies, there was there was a moment where Tokugawa Ieyasu and Toyotoma Hideyoshi did have a little skirmish, but then they kind of decided they were better off just, you know, being allies. And um, in any case, Toyotoma Hideyoshi is the one that kind of took up the reins after Oda Nobunaga died, and he finished unifying all of Japan, and then Tokugawa Ieyasu sort of just bit his time and waited for to Toyotoma Hideyoshi to die before he made his move. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to be going into the into him, his life first, or his battles first. So let's just get right on and read this. When Hideyoshi died, Tokugawa Ieyasu was his chief supporter and fabulously wealthy in his own right, with a personal army that was second to none. He wanted and expected to be Shogun, but, but politics meant that he had to wait for someone else to make the first move. He could wait, while many of Hideyoshi's generals declared support for him. Then he could hope that his opponents would move first, so that he could take control of Japan and be seen to be doing the right thing at the same time. This was the culmination of a life of warfare, with battles fought, fought alongside and against Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Tokugawa Ieyasu had become the best hope of Shogun as a result of many skillfully fought battles. And that, that's pretty well said, you know. So let's just kind of jump right in, I'm assuming we're going to get a cutscene here. No? Maybe if I click, if I, I can't remember. Am I going to get a cutscene? I should get a cutscene, right? Anyway, so for the Battle of Azukizaka. Uh, interesting. So, did you see that there's going to be two different... Oh, right. There's allies. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. I'm glad this is in here because in the Wikipedia article, I read that although this was against a sect of uh, Ik Ikoiki, which for those of you who don't know, is a sect of warrior monks that... Um, Sort of were in central Japan. They were groups of peasants and ronin and and samurai and and monks themselves that were kind of like the Robin Hood of Japan in a way. I mean, they they were kind of fighting for the poor and and trying. You know, they're kind of against the the establishment, against the aristocracy of of the samurai. And in this particular case, it's my understanding that um, the warrior monks were cla were claiming some sort of a religious exemptment from being taxed. And when one of Tokugawa Ieyasu's uh, retainers, one of the samurai, wanted to get rice for his men to eat, they were they just took it from this uh, from this temple, I guess. And um, that's kind of sparked this little bit of a this little engagement here. So, however, with that though, there was another sect of Ikoiki that was friendly with Tokugawa Ieyasu, and they fought alongside them. So it looks like that's not going to be controllable. It looks like this group of Ikawiki is going to be... See, it says allies, but then it says enemy. I wonder what that means. Because... In the battle, it was... In, in, in the Wikipedia page, it did say that... It was a pretty pitched battle until... Some of the... The opposing forces did, did kind of turn... On their own brothers, like certain samurai that were fighting for the Ikawiki, kind of, they saw Tokugawa Ieyasu on the front lines fighting, and 
being brave and shit, and they're like, oh man, we, no, never mind, let's not fight against this guy. And they kind of turned on their own people. So, so I wonder if that's what this is. I guess we'll have to get down, get on into it and see. And uh, yeah, so Tokugawa uh, fought the local Ikigi, took a prominent part in the close personal combat, and was hit by several bullets, which were slowed by his armor and lodged in his undergarments. Yeah. And then conditions kill or rout all the Iko Iki. Tokugawa must survive. Pretty straightforward. Let's see what my army is. So no, yeah, no warrior monks. So the warrior monks are are going to be like my allies are probably going to start off as like my enemy, and then they should turn during the battle. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that works out. I have what do I have? So four archers. I like it, and then. Three spearmen. Not too many, but we'll see what else I have. And then two cav archers. Okay, and then three, four units of Yari cav. So that's a good, good light cav contingent. And then one unit of Naginata cav. So a decent, hard hitting, medium cav. Interesting army. I mean, it's not without tools for sure. I will be able to get a decent amount of work done with my archers and my cav archers and my yari cav. And my cav in general, I suppose. Now, fighting against Ikoiki, they typically, I mean, if it's all warrior monks, they're not going to have any armor. So my archers are going to have to get a lot of work done against them. How's the honor on my army? So they all have honor of three, except for my general is honor five. Okay. Well, he has honor five, but then he's only a two-star general. Okay. Well, let's just get into it. I don't really know what what, it, what else to expect other than hoping that this actually is an army that's going to turn against the enemy and fight on my side. So let's just jump on into it, okay? Some men have strange and fortunate lives. Fortune smiles on them, keeps them safe for some great purpose. Tokugawa, yes, one of these. He was a hostage for his family's good behavior and survived. He became a great general, a loyal retainer and an implacable fool. He ended his days the shogun of Japan. He was a worthy shogun and a master of strategy, highly skilled in the arts of total war. Okay, so it's after I click the battle. Got it. Got it. I'll I'll figure it out eventually. This is looking relatively flat, with a couple forests dotted throughout. One right in my deployment, and then one right in front of me. Another forest. Look, looks like that's in the back. That looks like it's still in play, though. And then that one off in the corner is probably not going to be. Hmm. Kind of suspicious. I wonder if something will be hiding in there. But overall, it is pretty flat, and it's going to be pretty important that I do fight in the open so that my archers can get better shots on their warrior monks, and also because my army is really cav-heavy, so I'm going to want to make sure I stay out of the forest as best as, I, best as I can here. I have my army all grouped up and ready to go, so without further ado, let's just kind of begin the battle. And let's get going here. Let's get my... So my infantry is just going to be in one group. And then my cav is going to be split up because obviously I have more. So it looks like there's going to be enemy off to the side there. And then straight ahead as well. So let's try to get over here. It's not, much, I mean, it's barely a hill, but there's just a little bit of an elevation here. And I see, I'd, I really do think that one of these forces will be on my side, but I don't want to assume that. And <laughs> I also don't know which one it would be, so. I'm going to pretend like I'm going to be fighting against both both uh, both sides here just for now. Just going to assume that. And I want to send. I have cav archers being escorted by yari cav on both sides, so I should be able to pull them forward and get as much damage as possible. You know, now that I'm trying to remember what I was looking at in the main screen, and I should have. This is actually really important. I should have paid more attention to this. The colors used by the Iko Iki that I'm facing are, are the Shimazu colors, which is green, and the Mori colors, which is red. And if I remember correctly, 
The Shimazu was my enemy enemy, and the Mori was my ally enemy. If I remember correctly, that's that's what I remember seeing. So this is the Mori color colors. So if we are to believe that there are allies, I mean they are it does kind of look like they are marching towards that side, doesn't it? It kind of does. It kind of looks like that's they're marching towards the green colored Ikawiki over on this side. So let's just keep an eye on them and make sure that that's actually true. And we can keep moving up here and here. Let's just kind of pull our like have forward here and then let's make sure we scout this forest forest here. I do have my heavier cavern cav squadron on my left side here. This is going to be my Naginata cav and my Yari cav. Whereas my backup squadron on this side is going to be a bit lighter with two units of Yari cav. Whilst up here it's going to be Yari and, and cav archers. And that's going to be totally fine. So let's make sure that I don't forget Tokugawa Iyasu. He needs to escort his, his infantry force. And let's just keep looking at... It looks like... Looks like the red guys are moving towards the green guys. So... Let's just keep an eye on that. So what are we seeing here from the green clan? We got archers, 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 Ashigaru, archers... There has to be monks somewhere. The monks the monks have to be in the forest. Yep, I, okay, there they are, yeah. Sneaky gets. Of course they're in the forest. And let's just kind of head on over here and see... It really does look like they're moving. Yeah, so the Red Clan, it looks like they don't have much. But they, it looks like they do have... Is it all Nodachi Samurai? Oh my... Okay. <laughs> Never mind. That's great. It's a smaller army, but... Yeah, like... A bunch of Nodachi Samurai? That looks great. So, let's just... I don't want my guys in the forest, but let's just kind of make sure that nothing's in here. And then, let's keep moving my infantry up, because I do not... I do not want my ally to feel like he's being, um... Like, I don't want him to get ahead and, and get left behind here. It's really important that we attack the enemy together. It kind of looks like the... The, uh, the ally, I think, is going to be moving right into the forest, which is going to be... It's a little bit dicey for them. There's going to be a lot of warrior monks in there, and they will beat the Nodachi Samurai head-on. All things considered equal. And my infantry is a little lagging a little bit behind here. Which is kind of worrisome. So let's get them moving up. And then if they're going to be lagging behind. Then let's try to just do a little bit of skirmishing with my light cav units on both sides. Here and then here. See if we can start pulling some of these units. On this side it looks like the, I mean, three units of archers. Including the general being in one of those units of archers. Is a really tempting cav target for sure. Alright, who's shooting at who? What's going on here? Someone's shooting. Looks like on this side. Yeah, we are getting shot at on this side. Let's uh, back up a little bit. And then let's back up this side as well. Just maybe, just maybe we can actually get them to follow us. The AI tends to be pretty good at not over pursuing, at least in my... Uh, okay. Now they're facing me. <laughs> That's... That's a little bit threatening, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know anymore. It looks like I can't tell what they're gonna do. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I should probably, okay. I should probably be really aggressive here and try to take out like all of these archers. So let's do this and then like, let's do this and then this and let's try to, let's try to take out like all four of these units of archers if we can and what I will do and you Yari Cav as well you go and then just yeah keep my unit here like on overwatch basically so that we can shoot at you know warrior monks that might come out but then here just try let's just get rid of all of these all of these archers all of them right here and then just bring my infantry up and then here, okay, now run away on this side. Yari Cav, run away, and then archers run away. Because the warrior monks are coming out, spears are coming out as well. I do not want to get caught by them. Let's bring my 
general up, and it looks like all of this is caught. Now, Ashigaru, okay, they're all running away, running away, okay, they're all running away. It's just the warrior monks, basically, we have to fight now. So, archers, shooting, let's all make sure that we are shooting at the same unit. This isn't ideal, I feel like my guys are si kind of on like a little, on a little slope here, which is not ideal. Cav archers, you need to keep running away. Actually, let's put you on skirmish mode, just to make sure that you do run away. I, it looks like the, uh, Mori clan isn't gonna help me, <laughs> which is a little frustrating, but you know what, That's that happens sometimes. Let's turn around here and keep running down these guys here, and then here, and then let's get you... I need... I'm gonna need help on this side, so let's try to bring my Cav Archers back around here. Are they still getting chased? Not quite. It looks like the enemy is backing up a little bit here. And yeah, my Archers are still shooting, but that's a lot of Warrior Monks. And yeah, there's Warrior Monks here, 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 and let's get my Yari Cav moving back. And then, yeah, you as well. Move back, please. And then you move back as well. Yeah, they can be chased off. That's totally fine. And then let's just get ready for some, like, flank charges, I guess. Because, yeah, Cav Archers, you move up. You guys got pretty pretty decently damaged, it looks like. And these Warrior Monks are being really passive. Okay, there they go. Now, that, right as I say that, there they go. So let's just charge in. Like, Yari Cav is not ideal. Where's my Naginata Cav? Because that's... Yeah, Naginata Cav, you're the guys that I'm going to really need here. So are we going to break them? Yes, they did break. Okay. That's... That's the start. And it looks like... Okay. Oh, okay. Now they... They're all running away now. That's it. That might be it. It looks like they're all running away. Let's turn around here. And these two units have not broken. And right as I say that, they break and they break. Yes. So let's just kind of run them down here. If you guys are ever playing in campaign, just so you know, doing what I'm doing here is not really um, ideal when you are chasing routing units and you're fighting them head on like this. That's usually not what you want to do because they will fight past you and they will fight through you. And especially when you're talking about spears in a forest against Yari Camp, they will do a lot of damage to me and that's going to be more casualties than you want to take. Definitely, like, you know, all the time, especially in the Warrior Monks as well. Like, that's not a unit that you want to fight through your own units to get away. That's not how you want that to happen. So, if we look over at the Red Clan, it looks like they're just, like, done. So, like, their contribution to the fight was by not fighting. So, thank you for that, I guess, but... Could have used a hand, but... You know what? That ended up being okay. It looks like... The enemy army didn't have a really strong morale, which is kind of strange, because typically... Warrior Monks do have super-duper high morale. That's kind of what their whole thing. So that went pretty well. I feel like I feel like the fact that they kind of uh, left their archers, like they they left out four whole units of archers, including their general, just kind of out in the open, and they weren't really protected by much other than maybe a couple Ashigaru units, and that allowed my I mean that kind of played right into my hands, right? Because of course my all cav army was able to really pounce on that and get rid of their archers, but also their their general, you know, like right away. So that was able to do a lot of good for me. And in addition to that, the fact that their warrior monks are really, really passive, you know, they really didn't like jump, you know, and, and get, get on me right away. They kind of gave me some time a little bit to kind of get set up and get some shots in with my archers they're a little bit. They're a little bit too hesitant, a little bit too passive, I'd say. Um, but over, yeah, overall that worked out. Okay. I suppose there we go. And I don't suppose, yeah, I mean, Yari Cav getting 362 kills, that's a lot. Nagi Cav getting 199, and then, yeah, 148 as well. Other than that, though, it's, it's mostly on the rundown, right? Like, not a lot of my guys got a bunch of kills uh, during the battle, I don't think. You know, I think, for the most part, this army kind of broke right away. So, overall, I'd say that this is probably one of the weaker battles that I've played so far in the historical campaign. I would put this on par with the Hakata Bay battle that I played in the Mongol uh, campaign where uh, fighting the Japanese army on the beach, they kind of just ran away right away. And that's a little unfortunate. I did double check this just to make sure that... So when you play the historical campaign, there's not a difficulty slider. You just enter in and um, and then you go from there. So I did double check that just to make sure that I wasn't playing it like normal or easy or something. This is just how they were designed. So, um, yeah, that's, that's okay, I suppose. All in all, we do now have five more battles for Tokugawa Ieyasu, so that's a bit, and I'm looking forward to it, because he, uh, did have some pretty legendary battles under his name, 
I'm super looking forward to a certain few of them that I'm not going to get into right now, but I'm just I'm just really looking forward to what the rest of his campaign has to offer. So that's going to be it for this one. So until next time, I've been Connor Sip and this has been Shogun Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye.